British Isles Council of Prophets audience, our family, the guys we love, our loyal, intelligent, gifted listeners around the world in Facebook land and YouTube land. We are delighted that you are with us. It's warm, it's sunny in Scotland and England and Wales and Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. It's a miracle. The British Isles has got the sunshine. Vitamin D is restored. We are not having to warm up our light so much. There's actual natural colour in our face. And Mark Birch Macon, you're wearing layers. My friend, you've got layers on. What's happening in New well, I, I know, I, I know, and the sun is shining in Newcastle upon Tyne, but you know, you never know. You never know what's around the corner. So <laughs> it's like a, a be prepared. <laughs> be, be prepared. There we go. And of course, I'm jo joined. I mean, these two, can we have a moment of celebration for two of the greatest living prophets in the British Isles? I know they'll blush, but I love these guys, and life with them is a hundred times better. Mark Birchmaking and Rob Cates. Mwah! to you both hi are you rob i'm doing well i'm doing well i love that you called our our viewers li uh, gifted listeners i'm like yeah. i'm coming on isn't that isn't that isn't that a, a, a kind of an alternative way of talking about prophets and prophetic people gifted listeners they are they that. are you are gifted listeners and uh, please keep commenting where you're from i have to say john look glee i wish i knew how to pronounce where you came from tiskloa Tis Tiskelwa, Illinois, Illinois. I get that bit, but it sounds like the place we all want to be. Um, so sorry if I'm butchering the name, but you're very welcome. And then somebody else in the comments is asking, Polly, you are walking in the hot and sunny North Lancashire with the dog along the canal and beating off the Cleggs. And my PA who is managing the comments is saying, what is a Clegg? We have got to have a conversation. A Clegg is a vicious, biting, David, like a how would you, horse fly. They're enormous. I mean, like they will do you harm. They will be like blood running down your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Clegg are the worst of the worst of our biting uh, uh, insects because we don't have um, mosquitoes. Do you, do, you, do you have mosquitoes in England? Yes. They just don't give you malaria, praise God. Yeah. Do you really have mosquitoes in England? Yeah. Oh. You know, people from Essex, historically, have a natural immunity to malaria because there was so much malaria in the, in the east end of London and out to the marshes of Essex. Really? Yeah. I've, in never, the met, I've never met an English mosquito. That's because you've got midges. We have Mitchies in Scotland. Mark, yeah, the, reason why, the reason why you can never meet them, Emma, is because they're still trying to get their way through the revolving door, saying, after you, after you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, now we're in our cultural differences. Are you actually telling me that because the English are so polite that even their mosquitoes are polite? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was thinking, I mean, you know, my, my great... Um, um, professor of beauty sunscreen I'm thinking you know uh, don't forget the fact of 50 you know whoever's walking in in the sunshine with their dog this morning so um, but then that's me just uh, you know okay we salute you as a professor of dermatology <laughs> We're always looking out for our skin care. So, yes, I notice you're the palest of the lot of us <laughs> as you behave yourself in the sun. <laughs> okay. Well, these guys have got some amazing word of the Lord. And uh, Mr. Prophet, Apostolic Leader, Rob Cates, <laughs> tell me what the Lord is saying to you. I'm looking over my shoulder for that person. Um, <laughs> good morning, everyone. It's really good to see you. Um, I woke up in the night uh, three times and I heard this uh, very unusual phrase, uh, prodigal fathers. Um, and then I saw John Piper writing a new book. And for wow. those of you who don't know, John Piper is one of the foremost um, evangelical uh, leaders. He is actually a charismatic which is, he, he, you know, by his own profession. Um, but uh, he, he's an amazing theologian um, in, in the States. And as I was praying, going, okay, God, unpack this for me, I saw some uh, uh, kind of midlife 
people, fathers, but also some older ones as well. And in that, I saw uh, President Trump, I saw Boris Johnson, I saw Philip Schofield, um, I saw some of the C of E uh, bishops um, and wow. other kind of wayward fathers, those who've had kind of midlife crises or those become so worn down by different things that they've ended up kind of going off on one. And I, I really heard the Lord say that he is, there is going to be a reaping. There is going to be a great harvest uh, from those who have become prodigal fathers. Um, and I felt the Lord like saying, we haven't actually seen the end of the exposure and the wow. downfall of many of these ones in positions of leadership, that there is going to be more. But the, it's actually the Lord's mercy because it's the Lord's mercy to lead them to rock bottom so that they will cry out. And I actually feel like the Lord is saying we're going to be absolutely absolutely amazed by what he does and you Come know we, we we all know that scripture in malachi uh, 4 5 and 6 about the hearts of the fathers yeah. being returned to the children the children to the fathers but it always it says this in verse 5 i will send before you elijah the prophet yeah. and we know that's talking about Jesus, but there's also layers to that, right? Where I believe the Lord is saying he wants us to decree it as the prophets, to decree it, to open the way in the spirit, not, not necessarily for the bad stuff to happen to them, but at, for that might be a key that unlocks the way for them to come back to the, uh, to the Lord or come to the Lord for the first time. And I think it's going to be absolutely stunning because some of these people have just lived their entire life in crisis from, you know, yes. don't need to be rude, but some of them like yes. Trump, Boris Johnson and, you yeah. know, yeah. Philip Schofield, a lot of that has been behind the scenes, but their whole life has been one crisis after another, after another. And what we're seeing is them running out of steam, hitting the buffers. But I really believe like the Lord is saying, I'm not done with these. I'm not making a political statement, by the way. Yeah. Um, I'm just making a statement that these are archetypes for what God is about to do. Yes, um, and so I and I I I'm very excited by it actually. And, and, and Rob, it, I just want to almost pause and breathe in the weight of that word, prodigal fathers, wayward fathers, that God is exposing and bringing back. And part of me just wants to punch there and go, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Because when you get the fathers coming back, you get the capability for the double portion generation. You exactly. get the capability for glory in the children. And the sense of what you're saying, the m massive impact of the restoration of the prodigal fathers um, enables a, a double portion restoration of the prodigal sons. So I just feel like, guys, you have got to share this because this is a word that we need to get some intercession behind an agreement in the spirit. It is massive. And sometimes we have words, but Rob Cates has got a word this morning and that sense of the fact that we can have apostolic leaders or political leaders or celebrity leaders or prophetic leaders but not fathers and mothers in all of those places both secular and sacred and therefore because we don't have many fathers and mothers we don't have a cascading legacy of glory and that sense that when anybody uh, does think about parenting, because some of us do think about parenting, that we never fully grow up in our parenting. And if we are not mature in our parenting, we only ever think about raising babies, not raising adults. And so the aim with a baby is always to get them to go to sleep. And so I'm excited in what you're saying of restoration, but the legacy of the cascade of that. Yeah is massive absolutely Mark, yeah rob do you want to come back and yeah, add to that I, 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 and i just one last point i felt like the lord was really saying that he we've had generation after generation of kind of uh uh, you know, fatherlessness, uh, children being raised without the fathers. Yeah. You know, uh, we know that children do better in two parent families. We know that. And so yes. many of us look around the nation and we see that so many of the, the, the leaders at the forefront in the church are the women, which is amazing. But one of the things I, I, I've recognized in my own life is all of the most influential Christian leaders in my life are women, all of them. And they have been for the past 15 years. Wow. And, 
And it's one of the prayers that I've been praying over the past 10 years is God, send me the fathers, send me the Christian fathers. The Lord's actually opened a door to that recently, actually in the past month. But the, the, the thing is this, I heard the Lord say this, I don't want compound orphans. Come on. Yes. yes. Come on. You know, I don't want orphans yes. raising orphans, raising orphans, raising orphans. Yes. Yes. And actually, you know, in, in some senses, and this is why, guys, you need to deal with this and help us out here and share this. And, and the reason the reason is we have prayed this for years because we understand what absent parenting and absent fathering does. And so you can pray it. But when God says it, you know you're shifting the nation into somewhere completely different. So we're moving from our intercession, filling up the bowls in heaven to the spirit of the Lord saying, now it's the moment of the wayward fathers coming home. And so this has got to be spoken and agreed with over our nation. Mark. Yeah, no, no this is, this is amazing. And, and just, um, so really when you talk about maturity, it's kind of overflowing with wisdom, you know, in the sense that we took, we started the broadcast before about, you know, being in the sun and we're overflowing with vitamin D, you know, we're, yes. we're topping that up and overflowing it. Well, uh, how about spending time in the sun, basking in the sun, and then we're actually can then overflow with, with some of the characteristics of the sun, wisdom, maturity, you know, yes. so it's all about growing up. It's all about maturity and, and about having, you know, not having the mothers and fathers, that kind of keys into, I've just shared something at the beginning, is the fact that for in 2023, um, I've lost both parents, my mother and my father, Horrific. you know, and which is a trauma, all right? And so yes. I just want to come out with this statement. Maturity is working through a trauma rather than using it as a never-ending excuse for bad behavior, all right? I'm going to say this again, because we've all got this different stuff powerful. going in our lives. Yeah. Maturity is working through that trauma with Jesus from that place of intimacy, brackets, close brackets, rather than using it as a never-ending excuse for bad behavior. Rob has, has actually you know, intimated some names. We can think of other people, even ourselves, where actually there is bad behavior going on because there is lack of maturity. In, yeah. in, in 2022, I gave out a word about maturity will be really key in 2023 because in 2022, maturity was key maturity is mentioned in the bible if you look at the new king james version all right 222 times that's a bit of a clue in 2022 222 times so it's preparation yeah. for actually what we're going to walk through so so how does you know okay mark you know we've got to try how does one work through this place where should we be and for me you know and i'm living it in the minute is actually from where do we operate from that Colossians 2, 2 and 3 piece about being um, wrapped in the comfort of heaven and actually woven into God's love. Because in that place, you know, there is a, we, we, we discover hidden treasure, revelation, knowledge and everything else. So actually, as as our buttons are pushed. You know, we, we react as a son and daughter. We don't react as an orphan because when we when our buttons are pushed, we don't operate as an orphan in terms of competitiveness, defending self, easily offended, because if we're offended, the focus is on defending ourselves. And then once we focus on ourselves, we do not then have the resources to navigate the trauma because we're Very focusing good. on ourselves. So, so, but, you know, and then it makes us an, as an unyielding as a fortified city. That's what it says in, in, in scripture. When you're offended, yeah. you're unyielding as a fortified city. So we, you know, we may be operating that way. We may be dealing with people who are operating as a fortified city. So, so out of that place, we actually can overflow that intimacy of Jesus into other people's lives, which will actually lead to ask for maturity, receive maturity, walk in maturity. I spoke at both my parents' funerals to an almost 100% unsaved old, you know, congregation. Um, from an unsafe family, all right, from generations. I was the first one uh, born again in twenty uh, in, when I was twenty years old from a completely unsafe family, and actually actually spoke the love of Jesus, interpreted dreams, gave prophecies afterwards in the wake, and all that kind of stuff. And actually, what happens is is almost people become attracted to the love that you are displaying. Yeah. People who don't know Jesus, somebody came up to me in a restaurant because I had to delay um, going out because I got a voucher for doing something. I said it's because you know both my parents died, everything else. When I got to the restaurant, this is an unsafe person. But because I'm walking in that overflow of love, that intimacy, 
the yeah. person who ran the restaurant came up to me, never met me before, hugged me and actually said, I'm so moved by what I read in your notes and then started to share about the loss that they had. But because I was navigating wow. it so well, wow. you change the atmosphere and you call out, then you are in a safe place. And then people actually say, come and tell me how you are navigating what you're going through. And then you can pour out that wisdom into those people. It's incredible. Mark, we we thank you for your vulnerability and your honesty, you know, and to be broadcasting and sharing after what you've walked through is nothing short of remarkable. Can I layer what Rob is saying uh, for us all with, with Mark and see the steps of what God is having the prophet say in the atmosphere? Because we speak into the atmosphere and it shifts and it tips things. That's why it needs uh, agreement. So Rob's bringing the the ending or the shifting out of prodigal fathers and wayward fathers into present and whole and restored fathers and the ending of the compound orphan where orphan births orphan. And Mark is then coming in, giving a word that is like a net being cast out mm -hmm. to facilitate what Rob is prophesying. And the net that, that Mark you're casting is saying, oh, come on. The maturity is working through a trauma, not running away from it. Yes. And you can see how that is, is, is like the fisherman's hook of a word underpinning what Rob is saying. Let me add to that. And then back to you, Rob, I um, felt like the Lord was saying to the prophets and to people run, get, you know, grab yourself and run. And rather than run away to have a holiday or run away to have a retreat or run away, the Lord was saying, come on, run towards, run towards the issues. And the, and the Lord actually said to me, run towards the cities. And that was, I think, a shorthand for God saying, you must run to where the people are. Deal with that isolation. Deal with the retreat mentality. Deal with the running away mentality. Deal with the giving up. Deal with the sense of it'll be better if I go somewhere else. Deal with the, well, I don't think this is fixable, so I'll move away. And the Lord is saying, no, you've got to run towards why? Because you're not empty headed and you're not empty handed and you are not running into a lion's den, but you are running into a situation where the anointing of God on you is going to shift the situation because you run to the middle of it. And the Lord is saying, sons and daughters, you are thinking about a running away or an exiting to the left or the right or a stepping back because you have forgotten that in you is the solution to bring a shadowing change into that situation. And you can see how God is starting to put us back in family so stridently right here where he's saying, run towards run towards my order is run towards the situations in the cities stay in the room rob yeah i think that's so powerful you know and that that mirror you know luke 15 we see the father the the true father he hitches up his skirt and he runs towards the son yeah and the prodigal son in that that instance and uh not caring about his own uh, embarrassment or shame or the ridicule of the community the fact he's showing yeah. his knees and doing everything which was against the culture and again i think this goes back to the fact that we as prophets are also meant to be radically countercultural we're meant to do that which uh, is not uh comfortable and that people uh, don't want to necessarily hear we have to be those who'll say it and run towards it and I think uh, um, was it last year no about a couple of years ago the Lord showed me um, in a vision um, cities of the future and and the Lord was saying as well he says you've got to know whether you're to flee or remain and what you're running towards and what you're preparing for in the future and the thing is this we've got to run into the midst of that to get the people ready for what they what what they need and um uh, yeah, I just think there is a desperate need for us not to run away from the challenges uh, uh, of, of, of the day that we live in. And I think it would be too easy to create these yeah. enclaves, 
you yes. know, enclaves yes. of holiness and, uh, well, <laughs> are they even holy? But uh, enclaves kind of, uh, uh, you know, imprison ourselves and stick our heads in the sand. But um, there we go. Yeah. They're, they're kind of like, a, sorry, Emma. No, go, go for it, Mark. Okay. No, they're, 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 what you're saying, Rob, is almost they're like escape rooms, aren't they? They're not, they're not, you know. So, so the place that I described that I'm navigating all this in is that deep place of love for God. It's not an escape room. It's not a place that we go to now and again and then we escape from it. We've actually, you know, that deep intimacy of God is that actually that's where we've lost the key, mm. you know, and we're, we're going away from the exit door. As Emma was saying, is that net, you know, I've seen going through, um, you know, navigating this, this season that I'm navigating. I've led so many people to Jesus. I've, I've, I've looked at people in the cafe and said, you know, what's the problem? You know, people have got healed without even touching them. Then I've gone inside the cafe and led them to Jesus. I've had business conversations that have ended with me giving my testimony and both of us being in tears. You know, yeah. so it's that kind of, and, and, and Emma, as you were saying about being, you know, running to um, the, it's almost like running to the battle, isn't it? It's like David ran yeah. to the battle line for Goliath. Yeah. He didn't yeah. kind of meander. He didn't run away. He thought, oh, I better change direction. He ran and got there first. So it's yes. running to, not running away from. So, yes. you know, run to the battle line, you know, um, you know, see the net. I mean, that's the thing. See the harvest and yes. stay in the room. Stay in the room. Don't go for an escape room mentality. Yes. And I think, you know, you, you, let's just clear up um, a sense in the comments. There are absolutely times where, and Mark, um, I mean, uh, uh, all of us on the screen today have lost parents. Yeah. Um, uh, and it, it just we've all walked that walk. Yours happens to be mo the most recent of it, Mark. But there is that sense where you go, whoo, and you need a quiet space yeah. and you need a calm space and you need a decompressing space and you need a thinking space. And we bless those who need all of those things. But ultimately, those are not our destinations. And so when God is saying run towards the cities, he's phrasing that in a place where you're going to have to be back where the people are to bring yes. the solutions is really. And that's not easy um, uh, whenever you you just step back for a moment. But the Lord saying, don't stay in what is a temporary space and mix it up as a destination. Now, Mark, you had something else to add about the, the, the season of being a shift in the movement and the timings of God. And I'm really feeling this at yeah. the moment, this, this, this rhythm and timing shift and the anointing of a timing, an Issachar anointing of a timing that is falling on the people of God um, uh, to go at a different pace and to click, 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 click into a timing um, that he is giving to us to keep us alive and whole and in divine movement. Mark. Yeah, thank you, Emma. And it is that rhythm, that movement, that time, that click, click, click. And it, and it really came from a vision I had on Sunday and then Satiko on the broadcast on Monday said, there is no symphony without a pause. And I'm thinking that's a very interesting comment because actually um, we need the pauses to make the symphony sound like the symphony. And, and, and it's actually meeting God in the pause and waiting. So then the, the vision very briefly was the fact that, you know, it goes back to the hidden treasure, you know, that is Christ. And, and actually, you know, there's a great unlocking of things before us because as we run to the cities, Emma, the, the things that need to be unlocked, how are we going to unlock them? You know, so it's, it's in that place of intimacy that actually we're shown how to do that rhythm of grace that we become God's workmanship or poem, because in poems there are pauses. When you read a poem, there's a rhythm, there's a pause. And actually the symphony is the love song of heaven, the Zephaniah 317. So in the vision, my five fingers were opening up a lock that was in front of me. And oh, it on. had five movements. And so actually, you know, my thumb moved in a different way. My other fingers moved in a different way, but they had to be in order they weren't working all at the same time. And actually, there were pauses between them. 
So like the movements of a symphony, you had to wait because actually it was the timing. It wasn't just knowing what movement to do, it's when to do it. And actually, as I and it was beautiful, it was almost like you knew because you had the symphony of I had the symphony of heaven all around me. And I thought, this is so easy because I'm listening to the right song. I'm listening to the right song. When you're listening to the right symphony, it's easy because you've got the rhythm of unforced grace, the, the unforced rhythm of grace, Matthew 11, 28. You've got the the the, the pauses from God's workmanship, Ephesians 2:10, you've got the Zephaniah 3:17 put them yeah. all together it keeps you on track it's like it's like following a music sheet it keeps you on track keeps you in the timing unlocks the door yes i love a good dream um, and and rob and i if we can comment on your dream because there's such a glory when a prophet has a dream and we're all in it together going oh because we just love symbols and imagery as prophets and um, so what I'm hearing, and you can kind of, uh, uh, we'll, we'll figure out together, the sense of being in a place where there is an anointing coming on us to unlock some things. Yes. Would that yes. be a fair comment on it? Yes. The anointing yes. to unlock some things is the first thing. And if you need that anointing, and you're watching this, if you need an anointing to unlock what Prophet Mark is saying is that is a right now, a, an anointing to unlock some things. Rob, what are you getting from his dream? Well, I, I mean, first of all, I mean, five fingers, right? We, as we said earlier, you know, the, apos, uh, the sorry, the fivefold uh, ministry yes. working together in in uh, uh, not in uh, unison, in harmony. Which yes. is yes. The, the musical? The, the musical ones amongst us will understand that unison being the same thing, harmony being different things that work yes. well together. Yes. Um, but also five being grace, right? That the Lord is saying there is yes. grace for this. I, I feel on. like you know we've been for how long have we been saying can we get the fivefold to actually work together? And it's almost like every attempt of it. There have been prototypes and people have <laughs> done some great things. But where is it fully functioning? And is it functioning en masse? No, but uh, the Lord is releasing the grace for it. But here's the thing. I think this, you know, th there are no coincidences in the kingdom, right? So the yeah. Lord has lined up us three this morning, each bringing a piece of the jigsaw of what he wants to do. And so the yeah. Lord is saying, I am bringing the grace to unlock all that I want to do. What do I need? Oh, I need, on. I need the fivefold operating. I'm giving the grace for the exactly. fathers to run home. I'm giving the grace for this. I'm giving you the grace to run to where the greatest need is. I'm giving you yeah. the grace to sit in that place, not to scoff and scold those who have stumbled and fallen and hit rock bottom, but to be those who raise them up and bring them back to maturity and he healing and life. That the traumas they've been through, which is what Mark was talking about, do not define them, but are the key, the breakthrough that bring many sons to glory. And that's then, amazing. And that's and great. And, and that, Rob, I, I just, and when you talk about the, you know, the, the fivefold, that's, that's what I felt. But also went from him and from Emma in, in uh, when David ran to the battle line, he picked up five stones, which again is great. So it comes back to the whole thing. How do we, how do we confront the battles? Well, actually we have the grace, we have the timing, we have the, the fivefold. Wow. Well, and you boys are spot on to time. It's dead on half past. Uh, this was very rich this morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So please, uh, we ask you to share, not because it's all about numbers, but really the importance of the agreement in the spirit is really vital. So if you can tag some people so that they, uh, that you know are praying along these lines, if you can share it because this is a must watch, uh, please help us out by doing that, my friends. And we love you. We bless you into a most fabulous weekend. And it's a, interestingly, it's a Father's Day weekend. And I don't know how mm -hmm. that's been. It, it's going to be painful for some of us, you know, and, uh, you know, soul searching for others. But as we enter this Father's Day weekend, I, I think that's in the British Isles. I don't know about overseas. But as we enter it in the British Isles, I think the agreement must be, oh, Jesus, no matter what place I find myself in regarding the father, may there be a prodigal father reversal across mm -hmm. this nation. And may that be the prime prayer that is released 
from our hearts as we step into these next few days. Apparently, it is Father's Day also in Canada. Hi, my friend Rose. Uh, we bless you. You're, you've got a dream team on Monday. You've got Louise Reed. You've got a lover. Oh, and Laura Beth. We've got those who are um, fascinated with Ireland on a Monday and a ran uh, from England. So we love you. We bless you. And we will see you soon. Bye. See ya. Thank you.